Welcome to episode 32 of Decatur Dish. I am Maria Moreau with Atlanta News First, joined by the one and only Dan Wisenhunt with our media partners at Decatur Ish. And this is the Decatur Dish. It's a weekly show where we bring you the top headlines that's happening in DeKalb County, as well as some guests that you might want to hear from. Um, we got some interesting headlines today that I want to get into, Dan. Uh, starting with the demolition of North DeKalb Mall, a major story uh, for this area. $162 million that is headed uh, for property tax relief, a big push from current DeKalb County CEO Michael Thurman. Lorraine Cochran Johnson, the presumptive uh, next DeKalb County CEO, she has been laying out her priorities and her vision for the county. And of course, we are going to be joined by a former Clarkston mayor and DeKalb County Super District 6 Commissioner Ted Terry to talk about what's been happening in Clarkson and a little more. And you want to stick around for this very special episode because, uh, Dan, I know you have a special message to our viewers that we'll get into in a little bit. Very special message. Very indeed. special. Let's talk about uh, North DeKalb Mall. This is going to be a, a major renovation project. It is. They're going to turn it into a mixed use development. They're going to have apartments. They're going to have a grocery store. They're going to have office space. They're going to have trails they're gonna it's it's a big big deal especially for that part of DeKalb County and that mall has been more or less dead or dying for for well over a decade so it's it's going to be a transformational project and they started knocking that down last week yeah last week and I just want to talk about some of the improvements that are coming uh, housing units townhomes retail and restaurant space and a trail so you know adding to the pedestrian uh, initiatives around the county. We've talked about that on this show before. This is going to be a mixed use space, like you said. Um, a lot of money that's going to start pouring into this and hopefully an added boost for the county. It should be. It's going to generate tax revenue in a way that the current mall does not. Oh, they're going to get some abatements for that. Um, but, you know, presumably they'll get sales tax and other monies from that. It's it's. It's a big deal. It took a lot of work to get here. It was a three-year public planning process. They'd had a couple of iterations of this redevelopment that had come and gone before because the neighborhood had issues with it. So this was a real uh, long, tough road to get to where uh, they're at. I want to take it a little back to the DeKalb County residents who have been feeling quite a sticker shock. The reality of the economy, property tax increases uh, that are being proposed and discussed. And now we're hearing DeKalb County CEO Michael Thurmond is announcing a $162 million uh, property tax relief uh, a plan. And I want to just break this down the easiest way we can. Dan, explain this to me like I'm five. Well, money is a thing that pays for goods and services. Uh, no. um, so... <laughs> Mike Thurmond uh, approached me at the North DeKalb Mall demolition, and he said, Dan, will you, will you please give me a call? Because all the headlines say that there's going to be a tax increase, but I want people to know how important this EHO, so the Equalized Homestead Option Sales Tax Exemption in a nutshell, means if you get a home, you're a homeowner in DeKalb County, you can check a box, and you get an exemption, that exemption is paid for with the sales tax money. Uh, for a home that's worth $450,000, it ends up being about $1,500 worth of tax relief. Doesn't mean you're not going to pay another few grand on that. Uh, but the e-host was adopted. It was approved by voters and every year. So it isn't really a new thing. It's more a case of Mike reminding people that uh, CEO Thurman, I call him Mike sometimes, uh, reminding people that, hey, we did this. And even though you're mad about tax increases, maybe don't be that mad because we're still doing uh, the e host So it's really, it's really not new as much as it's uh, reminding people of a thing that they did. Uh, so maybe they won't be quite as mad uh, at the county for asking for more tax money, which they're not really asking for. The, the taxes go up because the property values go up. Pretty stellar explanation. Um, hey, Try. well, from one CEO to another, let's talk about Lorraine Cochran Johnson for a moment. Winning the runoff between Larry Johnson and now uh, expected to be the presumptive uh, next uh, DeKalb County CEO. And might I add a historic win. She's the first black woman that would hold this title. Yeah, Lorraine worked really, really hard uh, to get where she's at. A, a lot of people assumed 
that uh, Steve Bradshaw would win because he had raised a lot of money for it and had spent, you know, really the last four years or more running for this seat. Uh, Lorraine went out there and outworked him. It was the long and short of it. And she's she's and then she went into a runoff with Larry Johnson. Two very different styles. Two very different. You know, Larry Johnson is more of a of a C-suite type person he's a little more buttoned up he's got a little bit more connection with uh the institutional democratic party and lorraine is a bit of an outsider but one thing she did aside from being a super district commissioner which meant she had more voters that she talked to on a regular basis is that even if you didn't live in her district she would still pick up the phone and talk to you yeah, speaking of uh, leadership, we're going to talk about Clarkston for a minute. We have the former mayor of Clarkston, as well as the current DeKalb County Super District 6 Commissioner, Ted Terry, joining us here in a moment. Um, but I just want to lay out uh, what this conversation is going to be about, Dan. Uh, well, Ted Terry is working on a lot of different things. Speaking of outsiders, I think Ted Terry is another outsider uh, who doesn't always go along to get along uh, on the county commission. He has a lot of positions um, that are fairly left of left uh, in terms of the Democratic Party. He brings a, a sort of that Bernie Sanders wing of the Democratic Party and progressive politics. But he also uh, was Mayor Clarkston for a long time and got a lot of uh, notice doing that. And so he wanted to come on today and talk about some of the initiatives uh, that he has going on. So we look forward to having that conversation with him. Let's take a listen. And joining us today is Super District 6 Commissioner Ted Terry. Commissioner Ted Terry, how are you doing today? Doing great. Thanks for having me, Dan. Thanks for joining us. Real quick, what is a Super District Commissioner? I notice you're not wearing a cape or anything. So what, what, what does that mean for, the, right. for our viewers at home? You know, it was created in our organizational act, I believe, several decades ago. It's basically just half the county. So it's kind of like an at-large district, but I just have half the county. So I have the western half. Uh, my counterpart, former Commissioner Lorraine Cochran Johnson, as you mentioned, is the other half of the county. So yet yeah, combined, we have uh, we had the whole county. And Super District 7 is currently vacant. It'll be filled in November, right? It's vacant special election for that as well, yep, in November. So what is going on in District 6 these days? I know you, you had a few things that you wanted to talk about. First up, we wanted to talk about uh, the sanitation rate increase. Uh, I, I'm going to uh, out myself here a little bit. This is the first I'm hearing about it. Uh, so, mm -hmm. so what's going on with that? Well, Yes, yeah, so there, we, we do hear about things sort of like the week or two before they're announced. Um, that sounds about right. Um, but what's, what's going on right now is the sanitation rate. So this is the fee that you pay on your property taxes if you get the green bin or the blue bin at your curbside uh, once a week. And so the sanitation fees uh, have not been raised in 20 years. And as a result, the sanitation fund is losing a tremendous amount of money. The last three years, we've showed millions of dollars in deficits, and we are at a point now where the current fee just won't sustain the operations just to make sure we're actually hiring folks, doing the routes, getting the recycling to the recycling facility, getting the yard waste picked up, composting it, as well as actually managing what is the largest landfill in Metro Atlanta within the actual, um, you know, the direct footprint perimeter of Metro Atlanta. Isn't the county charging cities fees to dump in the landfill or did I imagine that? So the city, so Chambly, Avondale and Decatur, they're at, they have individual contracts with sanitation operators. They take, they choose to take their refuse to our landfill and just pay the commercial rate Basically, uh, we did make an arrangement last year to not raise their fees, um, and we have not raised them for this year as well, but we are discussing with those three cities about uh, scaling up their fees, um, and we're looking to do more uh, food waste composting. Avondale's doing a pilot that y'all have reported about, and then Decatur as well. And so we'd like to get our cities involved in the food waste diversion from the landfill, mix with our yard waste, make really good compost that we can provide for DeKalb County residents. How does a county go 20 years without raising sanitation fees? I'm a little confused by that. It, it's interesting because, you know, uh, when you talk about taxes, taxes are collected in a, you know, across the county. They're used for a lot of different things. But when you have an enterprise fund, so that's watershed, that's public works, our stormwater fees, sanitation, these are enterprise funds that are designed 
to raise an X amount of dollars every year and be spent on a service that year or an infrastructure project that year. So the idea that um, you know the money that's being raised uh, would uh, sort of be not paying for everything is a little bit foreign because they're designed to be um, like businesses, basically. The county in the past did a really good job of finding ways to cut costs. So many years ago, or maybe not many years ago, but for many years, DeKalb had twice a week sanitation pickup. <laughs> uh, of course, that's moved over to once a week. Uh, we used to provide more sort of special events around household waste, more um, yard waste uh, pickups. All those things got pared back. And we began to do landfill gas collection, which does generate revenue. Unfortunately, that's been closed for about three years. And we're really putting a lot of you know, friendly pressure on the administration to get that operation back and running because we believe we could generate up to $4 million a year uh, in revenue annually for the next uh, 15 years. So you mentioned watershed. That is another fee that has not gone up in a while, correct? Well, right? no, the, the water rates were uh, raised for the first time in many, many years last year. Okay. And the bonds that we currently have do forecast uh, small rate increases over the next eight years. Got it. And we uh, recently learned from uh, CEO Michael Thurman that there are about $4.5 billion worth of infrastructure improvements that need to be made uh, to avoid a quote-unquote catastrophic failure. Those of us who have lived in DeKalb County um, thought, thought Atlanta freaking out about their water going out for a few days was really cute because we, we deal with that all the time. Yep. What, what do you make of the news uh, from Thurman's office that we're going to have to pay such a hefty fee, hefty bill uh, to take care of all this? How did we get here? Yeah, it was interesting that you brought up the Atlanta incident because I think when you talk about downtown Atlanta or major commercial corridors with skyscrapers, when you lose water to whole blocks, you're talking about tens of thousands of people, whereas you know in a neighborhood, so 82% of DeKalb is suburban, and you're right, the impacts are in essence the same infrastructure issues, but they might... Uh, you know, impact uh, one or two streets, for instance, like the water break on McClendon, as you're f familiar with, um, didn't make the news, but it was a major trunk line, uh, a major sort of break, and then not realizing that there actually was folks tied into the main trunk line, which is a big no-no <laughs> in infrastructure world. And so, you know, going back in time and thinking about how did we get to this point in DeKalb, and it's just literally decades and decades, not just of neglect, but of looking the other way, there's no way that a watershed department would have allowed single-family homes to be directly tied to a major water trunk line. Like, the pressure alone at some point would have blown out the, the gaskets in that house. Um, so it's good that we discovered that situation on McClendon. But, um, but yeah, it's, it's going to be billions of dollars. Um, a lot of it has to do with pipes that were put in in the 1950s and just haven't been touched since. Where is that going to show up? Is that going to show up in our water in Sewerville? And do we know how much it's going to cost individual? Because we already, rate payers in DeKalb County, we already feel like we pay a lot uh, for water and sewer as it is. So what is the impact going to be to, to people who are homeowners in DeKalb County? Yeah, well, I mean, that's another, again, a good example. The, the fees for water and sewer, um, just the rates that, we, that folks pay, whether you're commercial or residential, they had not gone up in decades. And so a lot of this is catching up for long overdue infrastructure. Unfortunately, we're at a time now where things are just more expensive. Um, Labor is more expensive. Materials are more expensive. We're using new technologies, which hopefully means that the, the new pipes we're replacing with or – there's a method where they literally will go in with a liner into an old pipe. They will line the pipe and then burst the old one. And so there's some technologies that are there. But at the end of the day, it is just thousands of miles. And even in a good sort of system, 10% of a water and sewer lines infrastructure is being maintained or repaired every year. And we were like doing 1% of that. So you just extrapolate that over many decades, and we are so far behind that we're right now the projections under the current bond that we passed last year, it would be a 6% increase for the next two years and then 4% for the final following, uh, following four years. Now, that's not 
what's being proposed for Scott Candler water treatment plan, as well as the other water infrastructure, because I think as Decatur has just covered, a lot of the focus has been on the consent decree, the sewage overflows. And so you got two sets of pipes, water and, and wastewater. And so what we're talking about right now is how do we actually fund some of the major water infrastructure, whereas the last two to three years have been really focused on reducing those sewage, raw sewage overflows into people's backyards, into the creeks, into cab. So do we know what cost increases we're going to experience? Like if I'm a homeowner, how much is my bill? Is it going to go up 6%? Is it going to go up more? What, what is the impact to homeowners going to be? Absolutely. So what we voted on last year as it relates to the watershed bond, it will be 6% this year, 6% next year, and then 4% the next, um, the next four years. So seven years of rate increases. Um, but what the CEO has put forward this in the last few, I guess, few weeks really um, looks to be an additional increase. And so that 6% that was planned for this year, it's unclear if that's going to hold or if we're going to have to increase that uh, even more so because the Scott Candler one is looking to be about a $250 million project. And that's just actually not for the whole plant. <laughs> you think, wow, $250 million, we'd be able to get a whole new drinking water plant out of that. Nope, it's literally just for pumps, a new electrical house, um, and some redundancies to ensure if the worst happened, power failed, or if there was some major infrastructure collapse, then there would be enough water to sustain DeKalb for many weeks. So uh, real quickly, we, let's talk about environmental justice. What is it? What are you working on related to it? What's going on there? So environmental justice really is this the recognition that folks, uh, particularly in DeKalb County, who have been on the front lines and fence lines of pollution in our county, whether you're living near the landfill, whether you your backyard has a sewer line that has ruptured and is pouring raw sewage into your neighborhood, air pollution in DeKalb County, if you live near the interstates, live near the landfill, air pollution is higher. And so what we proposed at the Board of Commissioners as of just a couple of weeks ago is the creation of an environmental justice commission. And the idea there is that those who have been impacted the most from pollution, from the really worst effects of, um, of climate change, have a seat at the table, not only to be advocates and provide accountability and oversight for the elected officials and the departments, uh, watershed and sanitation are two obvious ones, uh, to oversee and ensure that there are policies in place that are going to be reducing air pollution, reducing greenhouse gas emissions, but then also give those residents who would be seated on this Environmental Justice Commission a seat at the table to propose budgets, to propose initiatives, and the current legislation would have it exist uh, in its inaugural form starting March 2025 and would go through March of 2030. So is this a done deal? Is this happening or is this just still being talked about? It's just a resolution that's been introduced right now. So it's before our Public Works and Infrastructure Committee. We are almost done with our clean energy transition plan. So we've been working with the nonprofit South Face to develop a transition plan for DeKalb County to go 100% solar, 100% electric vehicle, zero emission, uh, you know, footprint by 2050, which is in line with the Biden administration. And so what we're looking at right now is sort of a merging of what ultimately would be a clean energy and clean transportation <laughs> advisory committee, as well as an environmental justice commission. Those things are not mutually exclusive. And in fact, actually, I would argue are very <laughs> intersectional and really should have um, uh, similar provence when it comes to the policies they perform, uh, propose. Well, uh, Commissioner Ted Terry, we're going to have to stick a pin in it and leave it right there. I hope you can join us uh, in a future episode, and we thank Absolutely. you so much for joining us today. Thank you, Dan. Appreciate it. Uh, so this is the Decatur Dish Show. I do have a bit of housekeeping uh, that I want to talk to everyone about, and that is about uh, the future of Decaturish and what that means for our community. So I started Decaturish uh, 11 years ago. I started it mainly to try to get another job somewhere else. Um, I didn't have any experience running a business. I didn't know anything about doing that. Um, and 11 years later, we're a business. We have employees. We have freelancers. Uh, we sell ads. We generate revenue. We do all the things that a business does. But because that was not what I got into it to do, uh, I got into it because I was a journalist and wanted to continue to be a journalist. Over, over time, that uh, wore me down. It became a little hard for me to deal with. 
Uh, lately, uh, within the last few months, other companies are starting to see what we've built here in uh, DeKalb County and are starting to sort of stick their toe in the water, get into our market a little bit. Uh, and we're going to have to ramp up. And I was really concerned that I would not have enough professional bandwidth uh, to ramp up. So I took the step of contacting uh, a newspaper chain uh, called Appen Media. They're a great group of people, family-owned newspaper business, been in the business for two generations, successful, smart business people. And they were very eager to work with me uh, to bring Decaturish under the ownership of Appen Media. And so we are under new ownership and new management. The short term, that means nothing uh, for, for our readers. We're going to still be the same paper. We're going to still be Decaturish. I'm still going to be the editor. Zoe Seiler is still going to be the assistant editor. We're going to have the same freelancers. We're going to be covering the same stuff. Long term, what I think that's going to mean for all of us, what I hope it means, is we're going to have a better product, a stronger product, a product that hopefully you can hold in your hands, an actual newspaper, uh, and that I will be freed up to do more of the things that I love, which include reporting, uh, editing, mentoring young journalists, and doing this show with our partners at Atlanta News First. Since we announced this story, it has been a whirlwind of uh, media interviews. It's, it's kind of exciting because something like this hasn't happened in a long time where two indie outlets have uh, merged, so to speak, or uh, somebody called it an aqua hire, which I think is also accurate. The response and the outpouring, uh, the outpouring of support has really been uh, amazing. I, I really expected it to be a lot of uh, hesitancy and maybe some meh, if not outright negativity, just because people don't like change. But overall, our readers and supporters have really embraced this, and my team appreciates that so much. And I want everyone watching this to know and everyone reading Decaturish to know that I intend to be your editor. Uh, for many, many more years to come, it is uh, a joy and a privilege, and I can't imagine myself doing anything else. With that, uh, we look forward to telling you more about the things that we're going to be doing with Appen in the days and weeks ahead. Until then, we're going to see you next week right here on ANF Plus at 12.30 p.m. Uh, we hope you all have a great week. Goodbye, everybody.